And tonight we are putting someone we admire in the spotlight. We are very excited to welcome renowned journalists, both in Spanish language media and mainstream media. Maria Elena Selenas is joining us here tonight on the show. An absolute icon. Maria Elena, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure to join you guys. Earlier, we were talking about the Trump organization being under investigation. How do you think that's going to affect his much rumored comeback, if at all? Oh, the investigation that I think is going to affect his comeback if he does come back, uh, because I think that it is pretty clear by now that people who support President Trump support him regardless of, of, of what happens to him, uh, regardless of what he does, regardless of what he says. Um, you know, he's very limited right now because he doesn't have social media, although he does put out um, statements every single day, sometimes more than once a day. I see that because, you know, I have access to the CBS email and I see the emails. It doesn't always make air uh, because he's just not president anymore. And, and his opinion uh, at this point on, on certain current events and certain people uh, are not news anymore. But for his followers, uh, he can do no wrong. And this investigation maybe could, you know, lead to criminal um, uh, indictments, maybe, maybe not. Uh, but we have seen in the past that he seems to be able to get away with just about anything. So even if he were convicted, as he said in the beginning of his campaign, if I kill someone on Fifth Avenue, you know, they'll still love me. It's pretty true. And I think we have, we have seen that and they have proven that. Thank you, Maria Elena. Those, you know, how the kids say now, those Trump stands are die hard for Trump. Um, yeah. I also want to ask you, it's been more than three years since you stepped down from your role uh, at Univision Noticias. What has life been like for you since then? Zen. <laughs> Relax. Well, a little bit less stress, let's say, than before. It's been interesting. You know, one of the reasons, I left for several reasons, but one of the reasons is I wanted to own my own time and I wanted to work at a different pace. And I wanted to work more on passion projects than, than anything else. And, and I have been able to do that. I've done a lot of different projects. I worked on, on my series on investigation discovery. Uh, I was able to travel quite a bit also. And almost two years ago, I started uh, being a contributor for CBS News. And as a contributor, um, I, you know, I do maybe 10 stories a year across all platforms, um, many of them long form. So it makes me very happy that I'm able to do that. Also, that I was able to cover the election for CBS News from Super Tuesday to the conventions to election night. And, and that's been one of my dreams, um, to have mainstream media pay attention to our stories in elections to pay attention to the importance of our vote. And a lot of the stories that I have done have accomplished just that, for there to be a light, shining a light, on our stories, on our issues, on our not, not just our, our, our problems, but also some of our contributions. So, you know, it's been pretty gratifying up to now. Buddy, I think many of us have uh, followed your career during that time in, in Univision and be it election night, be it uh, State of the Union or breaking news, we have seen you there. But uh, I think such a remarkable thing that I'd like to, to ask you about is that switch to to CBS, right? Now working with uh, folks like Ed O'Keefe uh, and special uh, coverage. I remember seeing some of the items when you guys were analyzing uh, that Latino vote, everything from uh, the surprises in Florida to what we saw in the Rio Grande Valley. Uh, for those who are listening and that are thinking of either switching a movement in their careers or possibly moving from Hispanic media to mainstream media, what are some of the challenges that you encountered and what's uh, a piece of advice that you would give the audience? Well, you know, I, I think it's still an uphill battle for mainstream media to realize the importance of, of Latino stories. Uh, I think just like the politicians, sometimes we're still perceived as if we were foreigners. Uh, we're still perceived as people who don't speak English. I mean, uh, today I was watching CNN and they were talking about access to vaccines among Hispanics and why isn't there more information in, in Spanish, uh, maybe forgetting that three quarters of Latinos are bilingual and they speak English also. So, you know, I, I didn't exactly leave one job to go to another. I, I, uh, that was not my plan. It just turned out that way. Uh, but one thing that I learned when I started working at CBS is that news is news, no matter what language it is. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's important. It's, um, uh, you know, the focus is important. The perspective is important. Maybe one of the things that is different is, 
is the type of uh, uh, of slant or focus that we give. You know that in Spanish language media to us, uh, Latino stories are very important, and we are sort of like advocate for Latinos. Advocating for anyone is a no-no in mainstream media. Um, uh, but that has also changed because I think ever since the you know George Floyd murder, there's been a little bit of change out there with news directors, whether it be in television or, or in print, that are beginning to notice that people, that minorities, that people of color, reporters of color, uh, do have a perspective that's important to include in their stories because they know their own communities. When before it used to be, no, don't cover it because you will be, you know, you won't be objective, you'll be biased. Um, but I think that that is also changing. So, I mean, if, if, if what you're asking for is advice, is you know know what you want and try to understand the difference between the two and the difference between the two maybe are some of the types of stories that that you might cover um i wouldn't necessarily say in the case of cbs that it's bigger than univision because univision was very big um but it's um you know it, it's another language but news is news and journalism good journalism is good journalism yeah, perspective is everything. That's why my co-host and I, we started outside the box and, and commenting on so many issues that affect our community because yeah. we do feel passionately about immigration, but we also feel so passionately about so many other topics. That's why we're so grateful to see you as an example on television, on CBS, seeing you do great journalistic work. On that same note, you've been able to accomplish something that many people aspire to do with one language. You've now done it with two languages, in English and Spanish. What's next? What, what, what's on your bucket list? Oh, you know, um, there's a lot of things I want to do. I want to produce. Um, and, and I have been working out for years and developing uh, programming, creating content for streaming. And, you know, it, it's one step at a time, and I'm advancing a little bit more and more. Uh, as you know, People don't even watch television anymore. I'm sure that most of you probably don't have cable. Maybe your parents have cable. I know my daughters in my house, we have four TVs and only the ones I watch have cable and my daughters don't. So, you know, the important thing is to be able to do, to, 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 to have a, a telephone in which uh, people can watch my, oh, by the way, it's the dreamers, mm -hmm. <laughs> the dreamer signal on my phone. Um, so anyway, sorry <laughs> to get off the subject, but, uh, I think that we need to adapt to the new times and the new times are um, the medium and the platform and the platform is digital. The platform is telephones and, 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 and Facebook and, uh, and, and your, you know, your iPad, not even your laptop anymore. I mean, your iPad is and, and your iPhone. So I want to be able to do the types of shows, preferably long form that, um, that you can stream, that you can see that way. So, but I want to do it in, in production. And of course, you know, I'm a storyteller. I have covered the world and I, I know that I can cover any story, but I do have a special interest in telling our stories because it just dawned on me when I was at Univision that, you know, Spanish language TV is so good at telling our stories, but at times I feel like we're preaching to the choir that our stories need to be told to different audiences and different platforms. Uh, because as I mentioned before, and I think that's one thing that, I think I pretty much have proven and, con and confirmed um, during the time that I have been working at, at CBS and, and, and on other projects that, you know, we have a long way to go as a community uh, to be recognized. Um, we're growing, but our recognition isn't growing with our numbers. We're already the largest minority. We're already the second largest voting bloc in the country. Uh, yet our stories are not being told with the with the, you know with the amount of veracity that they should be told you know uh, so I, I'm just hoping to be able to push I mean that is that is my mission now you know ever since I started my career and I've said this many times in the past ever since I started my career I realized that I found my passion and I turned it into my mission so because I left the university doesn't mean that my mission ends on the contrary my mission continues and now it even grows. And, and to me, it's very important to tell Latino stories, to tell the Latino story, no matter how small the group, whether it's 10 people, whether it's a thousand people, whether it's a million people, I just want to have that opportunity because I, I just feel that, you know, my community is so important to me. It's so ingrained in me 
And we have such deep roots in this country. I mean, just think about it. Spanish was spoken before English in the U.S. Um, yet, uh, I don't think that we're getting the recognition and the respect that we deserve as a community. And that is part of my mission. And I do it through my civic engagement activities, but I want to do it through the media too. So that is my goal. And thank you. You know, sometimes you have to take a step back to be able to take two steps forward, and and you have to knock on a lot of doors, and you have to have a lot of patience. Thank God I have. That's a lot very of true. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. Thank God you do, because you really are paving the way for us. Uh, you've paved the way, you know, for men, for Latinos, men and women, for myself as a woman in this industry. Um, you've paved the way for all of us. And I really want to ask you, what would your advice be for those of us who are starting off in, in this industry? Well, you know, it, it, it's changed a lot since I started. You know, first of all, there's just a lot more outlets. I know it's very challenging because there's so many people that want to be journalists and there's only a limited amount of positions. But one thing that I have realized is that uh, young people are just taking it upon themselves. And you are the perfect example of that. I remember in interviewing, uh, I think it was Maria Hinojosa years ago on a panel where she said something that really stayed with me. She said, one day I decided that if they won't publish you, I'll publish myself. And that is what you guys are doing. It doesn't mean that no one wants to publish what you're doing right now. I'm sure they do, but you're not waiting for someone to come and do it. You're doing it on your own. And that is a great thing about journalists at this moment, that you are taking the initiatives, that there's a lot of outlets, that there's a lot of platforms where you can do it on your own and where you can start building that, whether you call it a resume or start building your brand. Um, and, and building a brand really is what now we want to do. Why can't we each be you know, our, own, our, our own brand and, and do our own thing and become our own companies and become our own bosses? and get the amount of following that advertisers look for. And why do I bring in advertisers in all of this? Because, you know, this is a business after all, and any business uh, uh, of broadcasting, um, whether it's on television, on broadcast or, or streaming, you know, it has to be supported and it has to be financed. So whether it's a foundation, whether it's advertisers, whether it's just philanthropy donors, uh, you know, you want to be able to attract those people by offering uh, the best of what you have to give, by putting your best face forward, by putting your community's best face forward, by putting your best work forward, and by being creative. Um, so really, there's no limit. You know, I, I, I there's times when I feel, uh, you know, I feel bad because it's tough out there. I mean, the job market is tough for everyone, and, and including in the media. Um, and at the same time, for, for journalists, there's, are, they're constantly under attack. Not only is their credibility being put into question, but also you see so many small local newsrooms being closed down, shut down, or, or having their uh, budgets reduced. And, you know, and, and young journalists not having that opportunity to showcase their, their work. So, so I do worry. But then, again, I remind myself that I really believe in the resilience of uh, of my gener of your generation, not my generation, your generation. <laughs> That's very uh, sound advice, Maria. And I want to ask you in your earlier uh, answer, you, you talked about sort of your passion uh, for telling the stories of our community and making sure that those stories are rightly represented in the media. Uh, but another place where the stories of Latinos uh, need representation is uh, in government. And I wanted to ask you, has it ever crossed your mind possibly uh, to run for office, to get involved in, in politics front and center? Absolutely not. No, politics <laughs> is not for me. I've always had a lovely <laughs> relationship with politics, and I really would prefer to be on this side of politics and being an observer and being a critic and being, uh, you know, asking the questions than, than, than being in government, uh, especially right now. I mean, government is, um, at this point, is, is, uh, is really ugly, you know? It, it's... It's supposed to be a civic duty. It's supposed to be a service to your community. And it has turned into, you know, a, a very nasty, rude uh, fight. Um, you know, struggle to get your voice out there. Constantly being having to be on the defensive. Um, and, and, you know, to be honest with you, I, I know it's not all of them, but some politicians sometimes have to, 
you know, bow to special interest because they need to get the donations in order to be reelected. They need money to be reelected. Um, but no, politics is not something that I want to be involved in at all, at least not as a politician. I am still very passionate about covering politics and, and questioning those who are in power and making sure that the people that they are trying to serve understand what that politician has to offer and hopefully make sure that the politician understands the needs of those they want to elect them. On that same note, uh, you mentioned earlier that you're, you're used to fielding the questions. What's one question that you've never been asked, but you often wish people did? God, I don't know. I get asked a lot of questions. I don't know that there's something. Um, I mean, maybe who I am. You know why? Because I think that there's times when all of us fall into this. We see each other as what we do and not who we are. And, you know, I am not just a journalist. I am a woman. I am a mother. I am a sister. I am a Mexican. I want to be me. And I think that's one of the things that makes me feel good about being on my own and being an independent journalist now. Uh, having that opportunity um, to just be me. And, and uh, you know, not to say that while I was working at Univision, I wasn't. Because I think one of the most important things that you can do is, um, you know, is, is be transparent, is be honest, is be, be yourself when you are communicating with people, because that's how you gain people's trust. And, you know, I, I feel very fortunate that I was able to gain trust of, uh, of, of so many people. And, and how do I know that? I know that through social media. You know, that's, there's good things and bad things about social media. There's some people that hide behind, uh, you know, their avatar and, and, and just spew out hate. But then there's a lot of people that that just communicate with you and tell you how you feel. So it wasn't until I left that I realized that maybe I had made an impact in somebody's life. Um, before that, you know the ratings. I mean, you know, there's X amount of people that are watching you. Maybe you know where they're watching you. You might even know how old they are. You might even know what income level they are. But you don't know what they think. You don't know what they feel. You don't know what they need. You don't know. You know, if, if, if the work that you're doing, that you and your team are doing day to day is uh, really impacting their lives. And, and I realized that it was, and, and, and it was the biggest satisfaction that I could ever leave with. I mean, it's, I, I'm telling you the day that I left and I, and I saw those messages, I cried till three in the morning because it was, it really touched me because I didn't realize that. Um, and then I became me and, and, and then I, I was beginning to be more comfortable with you know, not just the journalist, but also the woman who is very committed to her community because I'm committed to my community, not because I'm a journalist, but because I am one of those people that I was reporting to. I am also the daughter mm -hmm. of immigrants, of Mexican immigrants. I am also, you know, someone who started working when I was 14 and, and you know, came up the ranks. I'm also someone that, that has been dreaming about, um, you know, progressing in life. So I felt that I was part of the community that I was reporting to, and I still feel that way. I just happen to be on this side of the camera, but I'm no different than the people that I'm talking to. I, I love that you say that, Marielena, because it is true. People see you on camera and they do think you're that journalist. They don't they don't understand the the humanity of of you know people in general. Whether you're a politician, a journalist, a celebrity, we are all human. And I love that you brought that up. And speaking of our dreamers, because we have so many dreamers, what would you say to um, those people that feel like they're stuck at a at a at a job that they don't love and they want to switch gears and maybe find another career? Well, I'm telling you, I'm one that, uh, you know, living proof that you can reinvent yourself, that it's never too late to reinvent yourself, but it's also never too early to reinvent yourself. But, but one thing that is important, and, and I say that because I have a 23-year-old daughter who already wants to reinvent herself. She's only been working a year. Uh, so I have to be very careful. She says, well, you did it. Why can't I do it? Okay, I planned it, and I planned it for a long time. I think, first of all, you have to be sure of what it is that you want to do next. I don't think it's a good idea to be inside a career and say, I don't like this anymore. I'm going to leave. Where are you leaving to? I don't know. I'll figure it out. Well, you can't really figure it out. When you get to a certain age, 
states where you um, where you have to figure it out before you leave where you are. But you need to take the steps. You have to go from dreaming about it, from thinking about it, to actually taking action and planning it and taking the necessary steps to get to where you want to go, where you're in the position that you're ready to move on to something else and to make that career change. If it is a career change, sometimes it's a life change. Sometimes it's a career change. Sometimes you want to move from one city to another. Some, you know, There's so many ways of changing your life. The important thing to know is that there is absolutely no reason why someone should be unhappy and have to put up with being unhappy, with being um, feeling uncomfortable in their job, uh, with being maybe um, discriminated against in their job, with not being valued in their job, uh, you know, whatever it is that is not making you feel like you are fulfilled, like you're making a difference, that, that you know, that you're actually uh, getting something out of it and giving something to this position, it's time to make a change. So raise your hand and say it. Don't just suffer quietly. I think I'm one who, who had, has always raised my hand. Of course, in the beginning, when I first started my career, I didn't. I was so shy that it took me a year to raise my hand in press conferences and ask a question because I was afraid I was going to ask the stupid question. And when I realized that all the other reporters were asking the same questions I wanted to ask, I started raising my hand, and since then I haven't. So I've always been outspoken when raising my hand and saying, I'm here, I can cover that story too. Don't forget it's my turn to cover this story. I'm willing to take the risk and go to Iraq. I'm willing to do this. I'm willing to do that. In the beginning of my career, I said yes to everything. I said yes to every single challenge because that's how I thrive. I thrive on challenges. I didn't want to be the person that was gliding through life, you know, effortlessly pushing the easy button and expecting to get something out of it and expecting to, to, to succeed and get ahead. I always needed that challenge. I always needed to grow personally and professionally. When I feel that I am in a place where I am no longer growing, where there's just no space for me to go there, then I have to find somewhere else to grow. Even if I have to take two steps back, I mean, one step back to eventually take two steps forward. So yeah, reinvent yourself. I'm all for it, but plan it. Prepare yourself for it in every way that you can. Then take action. Wow, thank you so much for joining us on this <laughs> show. On behalf of my co-host and I, you're not only an icon, but you're just an absolute example. You could have easily gone and sailed and off uh, into the sea after finishing your Spanish language career in media, but you're out there setting the example and opening doors for, for aspiring journalists and not just in media, but in other industries as well. Because when we see our gente, when we see our people on that television screen, it inspires us to aspire for more. So on behalf of our co-host, Thank you so much for joining us on Outside the Box. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much. Thank you for inviting me. And it was great congratulations advice. Congratulations to the three of you for doing what you're doing. It's great. Keep on doing it. And I wish you the best of luck and the best success. All right, Outside the Box fam. You have made it to the end of the video. With that being said, I have a very, very important message. Subscribe to this YouTube channel because you can get all our episodes all our commentary, all the interviews, all the latest. Smash that like button. Leave us comments because we're going to be interacting with you guys. See you guys soon.